Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, and this is Double Bits Workshop. Thank you all so very much for joining me today. I will be going through the process of making a pallet wood American flag. Now I've seen a few of these kind of posted up on Reddit, I've seen them on Pinterest, all over Facebook, and I get the general concept and idea, but I'm not a huge fan of how it looks if you just take a palette and paint it, because the shape isn't quite right, and that just bothers me. <laughs> so today I'm going to be showing you what I did to make a smaller, more sleek down version that actually looks like an American flag, but can still be definitely some lawn decoration or it can be used in your home, and I'll make probably two different renditions of it. So that way you get kind of an idea and a feel and appeal of exactly what it is that you yourself may want to create. So one of the things that I would like to try with this is I've seen a lot of painted ones. Um, I've seen a few burnished ones, but I don't necessarily see myself burnishing perfect stars <laughs> with just a hot blowtorch end. So what I came up with the idea on was, you'll see here in a quick second, I uh, made some of these little stars and they're not the most perfect star that could be made but they are made by hand and they're made by me and these are the first ones that I have made so they turned out pretty good I feel but all I did was uh, a buddy of mine has a plasma cutter and a welder <laughs> so sorry about that if you don't have that necessarily but um, I borrowed those from him and I used a plasma cutter and a stencil my wife had printed off of the internet for a little star that she marked out with a sharpie for me. I cut out that star shape and uh, the star she printed looked perfect geometric of course, but the one that I cut out, well, it's got some personality to it. And I took that on some flat steel that I had just in the backyard, cut those out, and I welded them onto some different rods of steel that I had. Uh, this is actually a link, uh, end link, or sway bar in link for a expedition that my father-in-law had and I had this just kind of knocking around for a while so I liked it because there is this plastic bushing that I did a little tack weld not amazing but this will work for the process that is ahead of me but I did a little tack weld so that this could kind of be on there but lightly loose so as I'm heating this end with the torch I'm not necessarily feeling any of that heat transfer up into the rod of steel up here into my hand this uh, plastic or rubber will actually absorb a little bit of that so I can get a couple heats before I start kind of smell that rubber smell. Alternatively, I also had some uh, just rebar and this is just from a job site that they were just throwing away like gobs of it so I ended up snagging it and throwing it with my pile of steel knowing I'd need it for a future project. And it already had a curve in it so I figured I might throw a little hand like rubber or some leather or something on there and same process, just set it down hit it with the torch and then that way you get a shadow of this and then just the outline of it. Uh, alternatively as well to that, I will be heating these like a brand and then just sticking them to the wood and seeing which one looks better for that process. And if you don't have these, you can purchase them. I think they're a little bit more expensive. I kind of glanced at them a while back. I'm not sure exactly what they're going for now. I was kind of forgetting what terms I used for them, but there are some branding irons, I think it's the main term that most people use for them, that are stars, that you can purchase to just brand a star into something. And I think they range anywhere, if you can find them on eBay for as cheap as 15 bucks, but you have to pay shipping and handling, so double that probably around 30, just be safe. Otherwise, I have seen them go for upwards of 70 to $150, depending on how crazy they are, or if you send in your custom designed for someone else to use like a water jet and cut it out for you, that's when they get expensive. So you can purchase these. Feel free to look around on the internet if you want to continue on my process doing that as well. So what I'll be doing next in this process is, is once you've seen exactly how I made these, we'll continue on with the process of taking apart the pallet. Um, I'm going to try to pull the boards from the pallet, cut the ends, shorten it, make my distance the way I want it to be, kind of lay out the boards and do a light sanding. Because if you leave them very raw and try to burnish on top of that, a lot of the little like fur sticking up will burn down and then you'll start to scorch the top of it and it'll kind of get an uneven look and then you'll get some charring and it'll just kind of throw you off. So if you do a light sand over it before you burnish it, it gives you a lot better control over exactly how that burnishing or uh, 
the term that is used, I think is a shishikiban. <laughs> that is another term that is used for it as well. Uh, and you'll get different gradients of that a lot more easily and you'll have a lot more control over it as you play around with it if you sand beforehand. So just a little tip there for you. I've done a few of these. That was kind of my go-to at first for a lot of things. was just to burnish it before painting it, staining it, or anything. So I will sand it. I will take the palette apart first, of course, and then we'll flip over to that next. So, so far what I've done is I have disassembled the palette. I cut both ends just to save a little bit of time and possibility of when you are pounding these nails out, you have a better chance of splitting and breaking this wood a bit more. So chopping those off, if you're very careful, is definitely a time saver. Um, I have knocked the two nails out. Some of these, the nails came out very easy, so I didn't have to worry about that too much. And then I have just gone through with the little DeWalt palm sander here and just hit each of the edges real quick, just enough to kind of knock it down. So as I'm moving my hands around and I'm working with it, I'm not risking as much getting splinters. And then also namely when I go to burnish this material, I'll get a more real true what it actually looks like versus when you do burn the hairs, what I've noticed in the past when I've built things and I've kind of just been a little quick about it and just did a burnish on it, it's not gonna be near my legs. I don't need to worry about it. What ends up happening, especially if this is gonna be outside, is that those little frayed pieces will, with wind and weather, just break off. And then it'll expose more of this underneath, and you may have burnished it and it looks great, but then once you actually let it sit for a second, that'll blow away, wear off, and then you'll be left with something that looks more like this, 
where you have light burns in it. This is just road grime essentially from this being drug and moved around as a palette, but similar. You'll just see this eventually and you'll see these brightened spots or you'll see graying where the wood is now nothing really protecting it. So doing a light sanding will help greatly in that process. So now that everything is sanded, I have 90 degree corners. I'm going to line these up and get kind of a feel of what looks like a good flag. And then I'm going to do all my burnishing on each one of these before I assemble it. And then I'm going to assemble it. That way I also don't risk having two boards where if I want one really dark burnish and one lightly burnished next to each other, and then I'm trying to differentiate the two, I'm either having to hold a piece of cardboard, or not cardboard, but probably tin or another board up to kind of separate. Well, this side gets burned and this side stays looking more on the blonde side rather than the burnished side. So that's the reasoning behind that. So we'll line this up, see how many it takes to make that. And like I said, I'm going to try to stretch to go for two different styles. And I'll show you here in a few what I mean by that. And that'll be the next step after we're done with the burnishing. So let's get to burnishing these. So what I've done so far is I have taken one of my little brand guys here, kind of get you a little bit of a visual there. So I've taken the little star guy here, the, uh, ooh, what did I call these, um, branding iron essentially, and I have heated it up and I have branded the wood 15 times. Uh, that's just kind of how the spacing worked out on how I had it drawn out on here. So you can kind of see what that looks like a bit more up close, and not so time lapse. So I did a little bit of a harsher burn to kind of create a differentiation and then to not just let it all blur into itself. Uh, I branded it and then I went around it lightly, kind of just hitting the edges to give the illusion of this being a different color than this darker color. And then kind of going dark from here and then hitting this that would be another way you could kind of do it is allow this to get really dark and then do a light kind of go through with it i chose a little bit more of just the hard line to kind of try out this time around uh hitting the edges you don't necessarily need to hit the back that is preference at that point i did that for three and i differentiated top board was going to be a hard line and then it'd just be light, so just leave the wood as is, and then go through with the burn, back and forth to do that, to do the pattern. Um, I stuck with six boards in total, so that way it'd be an even kind of setup of the lines, so that way you didn't have one over the other. And then what distance of the boards kind of changes from pallet to pallet, but what ended up being my board length for the sides, for the six was 22 and a half ish inches. Um, I just went off what the wood itself was going to designate since sometimes these will be three inches on this side, inch and a half on this side, depending on how they kind of go. And as you can see, this one's got a split on it. Add some character, so I made sure to leave it. And uh, some of these are the bottom boards and some of these are the top boards. So that'll also kind of add a little character and distressing to the boards. I didn't want to do a full on planing of the boards because that would make them ultra clean and fresh looking. Plus, sometimes uh, one thing when you actually do get into planing wood, you'll notice that when you start going into it, it's a long process until you get the entire board that exact same thickness all the way across. Otherwise, some parts will look perfect and smooth, and then you'll have a rough, kind of more rough look and rough cut in one spot, and then you're dropping that level on the entire board until you can hit that one spot to make it look nice and match the rest of it. So you end up designating a lot of time, and it makes the boards very thin at the end. I still want this to look like a palette, but like I said earlier, I wanted it to be 
redimensioned to what I wanted it to be. Alternatively, you can still leave the spacing and gaps on that. If you like the way the palette looks in general, you can just cut down the center and then go from pretty much what I've done so far as a palette and rock it that way. I like this little bit ability to take it apart and clean it up because as you saw a little bit, there was quite a bit of like fur and like stuck out rough cut on the sides. So I wanted to eliminate that and not have just oddities with how that burns on the sides. And this gave me the ability to have more of a uniform and a lot more control over it. So the stuff in the process now that I will do is I have 18 gauge, I think these are, yeah, two inch brad nails. And I'm going to take some wood glue just for a little extra structure and a little bit more time. And then that way I can use utilize the pin nails that question. But I will take some wood glue and just put a little bit in between so that this board is going to be sitting over it. I'm going to put wood glue for just that much of it. Not the full length of the board so that way as it gets nailed down it kind of presses that glue out to the edges. I can wipe off excess but I'm not also painting the whole thing and then having to wipe it and then you get this yellow stain kind of look afterwards if you don't go back and sand it again once it dries. So I'm trying to alleviate that. But that is the next step in the process so far, is just put a little wood glue down, pin nail it up, and then you're done. Let's get to that step in the process next. suddenly got very America in here. <laughs> I have to say I very much enjoy how these both turned out and uh, the two different styles I really enjoy both of them. Uh, they both have a place I feel one is definitely a lot more character and a lot something you'd want more than like an office or interior. It'd probably be this one because it has a little bit more detail being that it was actually used with this guy as you saw in the video earlier where I was heating this up and actually just pushing it directly into the wood kind of gives a little bit more detail to it. If you're something that's going to be more uh, in tune to have something on the outside of your house, laying this one over top of it and just hitting around it with the flame worked amazingly. You can kind of see that one a little bit from the corner there. Have it mounted up. So that style works really awesome. I liked having the handle so I could kind of move this around. And like I said earlier, this coming off of my father-in-law's expedition, just some component that I had that had a handle on it already. That worked really well for that. And not that you're going to immediately go out and create these yourself. You may. I don't know for sure. But those worked awesome to create these two and I was actually able to get both of them out of one pallet. Surprisingly enough, all the boards were salvaged off of using my Crescent Bull Bar. That thing works phenomenal and I'm still very happy with that purchase as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this little tidbit and kind of just a quick little synapse on how I would prefer making one of these. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it and got something from it or even just a couple of different ideas. Uh, like I said, the sanding worked really good to help just kind of give you the ability to have that control to create this. If you had a lot more of that fur on there and you're trying to create a little bit closer burn look to the stars, you might end up actually creating a little bit more of a burn over and losing them a lot more. So just kind of a, a little note to be made. Uh, you could optionally use tin and go that route. Tin heats up very quickly in comparison to steel, especially thin tin. Um, 
So just kind of keep in mind to keep water nearby like I did when I was making those in either regard. Uh, if you do try to use it to press into here, you want to make sure that there's a nice firm like either concrete block or something behind it, but something that's not going to absorb the heat. So that is something you could use if you don't have the options like I did to utilize a welder and a plasma cutter to create the stars that I have now. So again, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button if you don't mind. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, helps out greatly. And uh, if you want to get notifications each and every time I upload the video, hit that notification button. Helps you out greatly as well. So thank you very much. Have yourself a good one.